In this video, we're looking at an unusually difficult integration by parts problem. And there's two things that make the problem unusual. The first is that our limits of integration are from zero to infinity, meaning this is an improper integral. But that's not really much of a complication as long as we can sub in the infinity and obtain an unambiguous result for it. And it turns out that that's possible in every case, so we don't have to formalize the limiting process. The part that makes it really hard is that I have a cosine squared attached to this exponential function. Now you might remember that an integral that has an exponential function like e to the negative x attached to a trig function like a sine or a cosine can be handled with the looping trick for integration by parts. In that trick, you apply integration by parts twice and you find a copy of the original integral on the right hand side of your work. And I'll post a link to a problem that I solved by using the looping trick just to illustrate what I mean. Unfortunately, the looping trick depends on the fact that when you differentiate or integrate a trig function twice, you get back a copy of the original function. Well, this isn't going to be true for the square of the cosine function, so we need to find a new way around the problem. And there's probably multiple ways to do this integral, and I invite you to try to find more than one. But in my opinion, the best solution for this problem is to start with a trig identity. And this is a classic trig identity that we use to knock down the exponent of a squared cosine. You can even apply this multiple times when you have a cosine to the fourth and so on. So when I make this substitution, I'm going to pull the one half out in front. I get one half integral from zero to infinity. And I'm going to distribute the e to the x over the one plus cosine two x piece. So I end up with e to the negative x plus an e to the negative x cosine two x dx. And what we've gained from this is that our piece out in front is very simple to integrate. And the leftover piece that we have to integrate is an exponential multiplied by a simple trig function. And I know I can handle that with the integration by parts looping trick. So I'm going to go ahead and split off the e to the negative x part and do that integral. We just have to guess the antiderivative of that. And that's just negative e to the negative x. So I end up with a 1 half times negative e to the negative x. That's evaluated from 0 to infinity. And then I'm left with this integral that I have to do. 1 half integral from 0 to infinity, e to the negative x cosine of 2x dx. Now we have to evaluate that first piece across the limits of integration. So I sub in an infinity into this exponent. Well, what's e to the negative infinity? That's the same as saying 1 over e to the infinity power. In other words, 1 over an infinite number, which is 0. There's no ambiguity to that, so we don't need to formulate this thing as a limit and get distracted on that procedure. What happens when I sub in the lower limit? I get an e to the 0, which is 1. I'm subtracting that lower limit, so the minus signs cancel. I get a 1 in these parentheses and multiplied by a half. That just gives me a 1 half out in front. So I end up with a 1 half plus 1 half times this integral, which is really the essential work of this problem, e to the negative x cosine 2x dx. So our next step is to get into the looping trick for computing this integral. And I'm going to isolate this integral. And then we'll get back to this line. So I'll just put a star next to it. So what we're going to do is make our integration by parts substitutions. Let u equal e to the negative x. This means du is the derivative of that. That's negative e to the negative x using the chain rule there times dx. We make our substitution for dv. That's the other part of the integral, cosine 2x dx. And we have to guess the antiderivative of this to find v. Well, the antiderivative is essentially the sine of 2x. But to account for what the chain rule does when I differentiate sine 2x, I've got to have a 1 half out in front to cancel the factor of 2 produced by the chain rule. So again, I just want to work with the integral piece, and then we'll get back to the original problem. And now that we've represented the integral with these integration by parts substitutions, I can apply that integration by parts formula, and I get u times v as my leading term. That's going to be a 1 half e to the negative x sine of 2x evaluated from 0 to infinity minus the integral from 0 to infinity of v du. Notice that du is carrying a minus sign, and we can factor that out in front of this integral to end up with a plus sign. In addition, there's a 1 half we can pull out in front, which might be nice, and I end up with a 1 half integral 0 to infinity e to the negative x sine 2x dx. So this is exactly what we expect in the first iteration of the looping trick. I got back basically the same integral, but the cosine turned into a sine. After we apply integration by parts a second time, then we should recognize a copy of our original integral. First order of business, though, we need to evaluate this term out in front. 
what happens if we sub infinity into this thing? I get e to the negative infinity which I've already argued is unambiguously equal to zero. But what about the sign of two times infinity? Keep in mind, we're imagining x getting larger and larger and larger without bound. The sign function just keeps oscillating between negative one and one. So it's always finite, while the e to the negative x part is approaching zero. Well, zero times anything finite is zero. So again, we get zero for that upper limit. And one merciful thing about this problem is that if I sub in the lower limit into this expression, I get an e to the zero, which is one, and then a sine of zero, which is zero. So the lower limit vanishes as well. So that term is taken care of. And now we just have to compute the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative x sine two x dx. And we apply integration by parts one more time. We let u equal e to the negative x. This means du is negative e to the negative x dx. We let dv be the rest of the integral, that's sine 2x dx. So to get v, we have to find the antiderivative of sine 2x. And this is essentially the cosine of 2x. But I have to make a couple adjustments. If I differentiate the cosine, I get a minus sign out of it. So I have to prepare to cancel that. Secondly, the chain rule produces a factor of 2. So I have to prepare to cancel that. So I get negative 1 half cosine of 2x. That's the thing I differentiate to get sine 2x. So being careful to keep the one half in front of the integral on the previous line, I get one half times uv, which is going to be negative one half e to the negative x, cosine two x, again, evaluated from zero to infinity, minus the integral from zero to infinity of v du. Now this time v and du both carry minus signs. So those are going to cancel each other out in the product. And I can pull one half out in front again. And I end up with an e to the negative x cosine 2x dx. Now that's a copy of the original integral we started working on up here. And that's a good thing. Let's clean up the term out in front and then we'll get to that issue. So if I sub in infinity into this term out in front, e to the negative infinity again is zero. What about the cosine of infinity? Well, as x becomes larger and larger, the cosine function oscillates between negative one and one and zero times anything finite is zero. Same old arguments. So this vanishes. When I sub in the lower limit, it's not going to give me zero this time. I end up with a one for the exponential term, that's e to the zero. And then the cosine of zero is also one. So my lower limit gives me negative one half, but I'm subtracting that. So I end up with a one half for this term. And I have one half times the quantity, positive one half, minus a one half integral from zero to infinity, e to the negative x cosine 2x dx. Now just to clean things up a little bit, I'll distribute the 1 half and I end up with a 1 fourth minus 1 fourth times the original integral 0 to infinity e to the negative x cosine 2x dx. And our looping trick is about to pay off. On the left side of this string of equalities, I have my original integral e to the negative x cosine 2x. On the right hand side, I have a 1 fourth minus 1 fourth times that original integral. So all I do is add 1 fourth times the original integral to both sides of this. This means on the left hand side, I have one of these integrals plus 1 fourth times this integral. That gives me 5 fourths times the original integral, 0 to infinity, e to the negative x cosine 2x dx. And on the right hand side, the only survivor is a 1 fourth. All we have to do now is multiply both sides by 4 fifths, and I find that the value of my integral is 1 fifth. So we're still not done because that integral was just a piece of what we got in our original problem. Now I have to go back and sub its value in and I get one half plus one half times this integral that we took all this time doing a looping trick on that turned out to be one fifth. And I end up with one half plus one tenth. Well, that's five tenths plus one tenth. That's six tenths, which reduces to three fifths. A beautifully simple answer and we're done. If you enjoyed this video or at least found it useful, check out another one by clicking one of the links on the left or click the Zach's Lab logo on the right to explore dozens of physics and math playlists. As always, you can leave your questions, comments, and requests in the comments section below and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Thanks for watching Zach's Lab and best of luck on your math and physics journey.